this video, we're going to look at web forms for JavaScript. Hey guys, John Alder here from CodingMe.com, and in this video, we're going to look at web forms. So forms are super common on all web pages. If you ever need to fill out a form on a web page, that's a web form, and JavaScript makes it super easy to both create them and manipulate them, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always, and as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this JavaScript series, so check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic starter code we've been using forever now in this series, and I've called this forms.html. And outside of our script function, or let's say below it, let's create a simple form. So we need a form tag, and let's give this an ID of my form. Call it really anything you want. And right away, we want to close our form tag. And let's just make a very basic form here with an input box. And we want to give this an ID of, let's say, name. And we're going to ask for our person's first name or just their name, right? And then we can also give this a type of text if we want. You don't have to do that, but sort of good practice. And then above this, let's just type in, you know, hey, name, line break. And then underneath this, let's, let's put a couple more line breaks. And that's all there is to it. So this will create just a box. If we save this real quick and take a look at it just to see what we've got here, I go to my C JavaScript directory and let's click on forms.html and we see it says name, there's a form, there's no button or anything, but that's an input box. Above here, it's just called form below. So, okay, so far so good. Uh, that's built out the form below above with our ID of demo. So, okay, now we need a button. So let's go button. And let's give this a type of, you guessed it, button. So whenever you want to do something with a form in JavaScript, you usually call an onClick function. So let's go onClick and then set it equal to whatever you want it to do. So let's run a function called hello every time this button gets clicked. So the label of the button, what the button text is, let's have it say submit form. And then we can close our button tag. So now if we save this, head back over here, take a look. We've got this button, we click it, nothing actually happens, but okay, looks good. And we've got a very basic form. Now this looks pretty dull. You could spruce this up using Bootstrap or any sort of CSS framework. Maybe we'll get into that later. Not super important. Now we want to talk about the functionality. So let's go back over here. And every time we click this button, we want to run this hello function, but we don't have a hello function. So let's come up here to our script section. Now I would probably put this in its own file and then call that file from up in your head tag like we've been doing, like we did here. But for now, that's fine. We'll just do it right here. Let's create a function and we're gonna call it hello. And inside of here, let's create a variable. I'm gonna call it, let's say let uh, name equal. And we wanna get whatever's in that box, whatever the person typed in. So that would just be document dot get element by ID. And what ID do we want to grab? Well, remember, we gave this text box an ID of name. So we want to grab that, right? And then we want to get the dot value, whatever they've typed in there. So now we've got whatever they've typed into that field and we've assigned it to this variable. Now we can do anything we want with it, anything in the world that we want. So let's just for now, for this little example, let's change this text up here to give a little greeting, right? So it has an ID of demo, so we can play around with that. So let's say, uh, send greeting, <laughs> something like that. And to do that, we just call document dot get element by ID. And then which ID? Well, we want the demo ID, because remember, there is what we called that. And then we just want to set the inner HTML, we've done this in other videos, to whatever we want. So let's say hello, and then let's put a plus, and then let's put that name that we created right here. And then maybe another plus and an exclamation point. There we go. So, all right, that should work. Let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here, hit reload. I'm gonna type in John, click the button. It says, hello, John. And that's all there is to it. Super easy and very cool. So now what if we wanna reset everything? Well, let's create another button. Let's come down here and let's go button. And we want to give this a type of, again, you guessed it, button. Now, there's several different ways to do this. I, since we're dealing with a form and some text outside of the form, this stuff here, I'm just going to create my own function to, to do this. Otherwise, you can call the reset function. 
just by giving it a type of reset. In fact, let's just look at that real quick. If we save this, and here, let's say reset, come back over here and hit reload and type in anything. If we click this, boom, that disappears. Now it doesn't change the text up here, but it resets the form, right? So keep that in mind, that's kind of interesting, but we don't want to do that. We want to give this a button type, and then we want to go on click. Let's create a function called what? Clear form, something like that. I think that's good. So now let's come up here and create that function. Let's say clear the form. And we want a function. We want it called clear form. And inside of here, what do we want to do? Well, we want to change this demo stuff back to whatever it was by default. So we could just copy this whole thing, paste it in, and set this inner HTML to, let's say, fill out the form below. So we could just do that. And then we also want to clear the form. So here, maybe I'll comment, reset the demo text. So here we could just go document dot get element by ID. And then what ID? Well, we want to grab this my form. Remember when we created our form, we gave it an ID of my form. We can come up here and just call dot my form and then just call the reset function from here. Right? So go ahead and save this. Head back over here. Let's hit reload. And here I'm going to say John Elder submit form. Hello, John Elder. You want to reset? Boom, that goes back to fill out the form below. Our form gets cleared. And we just did one little field here. You can have as many fields as you want. All the HTML for form stuff, drop down boxes, check boxes, you know, radio buttons, all that stuff. That's an HTML thing. I'll let you look up that. You can just Google it. But the functionality is the same pretty much for all of these items. And that's all there is to it. Maybe we'll get into more advanced forms with drop downs and things like that in the next video. But uh, for now, just basic form functionality, very simple and uh, really cool. Now you're saying to yourself, okay, I'm never going to probably have something like this and then just, you know, change text. I want it to do something. I want it to go to another page. I want it to send an email confirmation, do something like that. Well, okay, you could do that. We're not going to talk about that in this video, but you would just do that in your function, right? Instead of it printing out hello name, instead of this, you would just write some code to send email, right? And that's a whole different thing. We'll get into that probably later. But, you know, whatever you want to do, if you want to then forward it to another page, a thank you page or something, you could do that in this function. Again, we'll look at doing more advanced things like that later on. But very simple and very straightforward and pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 190,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.